Good afternoon. This is Universal News Media. Today is April 18th, 2018. The videos we will be viewing just came in 48 hours ago on the 16th from the Federal Aviation Weather Cams in Alaska. Each frame in these videos is 10 minutes. I want to thank subscriber J.O. for alerting me to what was going on in Tok, Alaska on the South Facing Weather Cam a couple days ago. This video begins with the, the jet that we've discussed in many of these videos, which is responsible for creating the bright pink reflections that often swing across the bottom of the screen. Just in case the jet is difficult to see, here's an arrow pointing to it. This is the same jet that Mr. MBB333 showed on January 30th, 2018. The link to this video of Mr. MBB333 is in the comment box below. The Sun Simulator emits a black beam in preparation for either an eclipse or a near eclipse. In this case, it's a near eclipse, as we'll see in just a moment. The jet moves to position itself between the planet and the black dot on the Sun Simulator. As the Sun moves across the sky, it actually travels above the planet being concealed by technology. Some contrast is added to these images so that you can see the planet better because it is very faded in the atmospheric chemicals. Notice how the jet stays aligned with the planet and the black dot. This is a sunset on the west facing weather cam in Point Higgins. Notice that the black dot casts a reflection upon the water. This reflection is visible to anyone with or without a camera, proving that the black dot is an actual piece of equipment and not a camera or lighting issue. The south-facing weather cam in Sitka, Alaska often captures the red crater pocked planet rolling across the sky. We know this cannot possibly be a lens flare for several logical reasons, one being that even though the sun is now high up as we approach summer, this planet has not changed elevation in synchronization with the Sun. It's gotten a little bit higher, but not nearly as high as the Sun. To show you a comparison, here is the same planet a few months ago in December, taken by the same camera in Sitka, Alaska. The planet was lower in the sky because of the tilt of the Earth back in December. Because the sun was also lower in the sky, causing a daily solar eclipse, it was necessary for the eclipse concealment equipment to be activated. We see the black dot emitting a black beam in preparation for the eclipse. We can't see the jet from this angle, but we do see its bright pink reflections swing across the bottom of the screen. The planet passes in front of the real sun, but behind the glare of the light produced by the concealment technology so that it's not obvious an eclipse is occurring. At Thompson Pass, the south-facing weather cam caught the jet that makes the oddly shaped bright pink reflections that show up on thousands of these FAA images. We won't see the bright pink reflections in this video because the sun is now too high as we approach summer. The jet always chases a planet. There have been no exceptions to this. We know this is not a lens flare because the jet does not follow the movement of the sun, nor does it remain stationary with the camera. It moves independently of the sun and the stationary camera. This jet seems to work with the sun, sun simulator to help conceal these daily eclipses and near eclipses. Here are the two planets that we see the most often, the tiger's eye striped planet and the red planet. It's impossible that both of these planets could be lens flares because they are rotating and moving in different directions. They are not moving in sync with the sun, nor are they staying stationary in sync with the camera. In a couple frames, the red planet actually moves in front of part of the striped planet. We've seen this before from the west-facing weather cam in Chilkat, Alaska, only this time is a little bit different because the huge celestial orb in the upper left corner is visible for a longer period of time, and it's also visible after the sun passes over it. 
Although the jet is not visible from this angle, its bright pink reflections swing across the bottom of the screen in preparation for the eclipse that will occur as the sun passes behind the planet or the planet passes in front of the sun. The reason we cannot see the planet pass in front of the sun is because the technology is in place to conceal these eclipses that occur multiple times daily. As the concealment equipment aligns itself perfectly with the black dot in the center of the sun, or the sun simulator, and also the eclipsing planet, we see a reflection of the eclipsing planet now, although the reflection of the eclipsing planet is actually smaller than the real planet. The images with contrast show that the very large celestial orb in the upper left corner is, in fact, the same striped planet that we just saw in the previous video from Toke, Alaska. From many of the weather cams, we are starting to see purple vertical lines shooting down from the equipment containing the black dot, as evidenced by the southwest facing camera in Thompson Pass. We see the same thing again. The purple lines are not as pr pronounced from the Valdez weather cam as they were from the Thompson Pass camera, and it's occurring at approximately the same time in the afternoon, but minutes apart. These vertical lines are beginning to show up in many of the Alaskan and Canadian weather cams. I don't really know what these are at this point. The objects we have just viewed are part of an approaching celestial system. Many people ask when the system will make its closest pass to our Earth. A general indication of time is provided in the following screens of text. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe.